one of the main parts of building agents is connecting them to other tools. One of the hardest parts of connecting them to other tools is authentication. Specifically, when you want to connect to another service on behalf of a user, you typically have to use OAuth or something like that to authenticate on their behalf so you can act as them for this other service. With LangChain tools, you can do this today. You just have to set up each one individually. That's why I'm excited to show off a new integration we just added, Arcade AI. Whether you're using LangChain's tools or Arcade's pre-built tools, Arcade manages the authentication for you. So you don't have to do anything. You can just use the tool as you see fit. This allows you to create agents that can act on behalf of not you, but of your end users. So it can access files in their Google Drive or their Gmail or anything like that. This idea of authentication plays super nicely with LangGraph. A key part of LangGraph are human in the loop workflows. This is where the agent does something up to a point, then pauses and waits for the human to do something else. This plays super nicely with authentication. The agent can go about its job drafting an email or something like that. Then it can go try to send the email. And if it sees that it needs to authenticate, it can pause and wait for the human to click whatever authentication URL or something like that that is provided. We've made these human in the loop workflows super easy with LangGraph. And I think they're a great fit for authentication. So let's see how to use LangGraph and Arcade AI together. This is the quick start for Arcade AI. It's pretty simple to get started. You just pip install Arcade AI, Arcade Login, and then you can start using. There's an example of using Arcade Chat here. This is a pre-configured LLM they have set up with some tools, but we're more interested in using it inside LangGraph. As mentioned, one of the key ideas of LangGraph that we'll be taking advantage of is this human in the loop component. If you don't know what this is, check out our other videos on the topic, but at a high level, it's basically where you have some conversation going on. You then hit some breakpoint. In that breakpoint, you wait for new input. And this could take a second, it could take 30 seconds, it could even take a day. LangGraph is based on persistence, which makes this super easy. And then once you get that user input, you can keep on continuing, picking right back up from where you left off. This means that you don't have to repeat yourself or anything annoying like that. We've put together an example of how to use this inside LangGraph Studio. If we go to examples, then LangChain, and then Studio, we can see a nice little setup that we can load right in LangGraph Studio. Before we do that, let's check out the graph to see exactly what's going on. Let's take a look at the code. We can see that the first thing we do is load in our Arcade Tool Toolkit. After we do that, we have a pretty simple system message. We'll use the OpenAI model here, and we'll bind tools to it. This is all pretty standard so far. We're going to create a custom agent state, which is mostly just going to be a list of messages, but we're also going to have this auth URL. This is where we're going to store a URL where the user can go authenticate. The call agent node, also pretty standard. We're just going to call the model with the messages passed in. We now go on to the should continue edge. Here it's going to check for whether there are any tool calls. If there are, we're going to go to check auth. If there's not, then we're going to continue. Check off what we're going to do is we're going to call the Arcade Toolkit to see if it's authorized. So when we call toolkit.authorize, we're going to get back a response. If the response status is not completed, then we're going to populate the auth URL with the authentication URL that comes back from the response. The check auth node is actually kind of a dummy node that we don't really need. We're just using it for LangGraph Studio. We're then going on to this authorize node. This is really the only auth node that should exist. And this has a lot of the same logic as check auth. It checks whether it's authorized. And then if it's not, it does something. What it does is it raises this node interrupt. We're going to print out the auth URL as part of this auth message. After that, we're going to create our graph, compile it, and let's see what it looks like in the studio. We can see that this is our flow that we just walked through in code. We have our agent which can either call tools, in which case it goes down this flow, or it doesn't, in which case it finishes. If it calls tools, we check the auth, we do the authorization, and then we actually call the tools, and then we go back to the agent. Let's now try it out. So I'm gonna add a message. What is my last email? This is gonna require me to connect to a Gmail toolkit. 
I'm also going to configure it with a user ID. This is how I can track the end users of my application. I'm going to call it Sam123ABC. I'm then going to submit this. We can see that the agent first calls a tool called Google List Emails, and this is taken from the Arcade Toolkit. It then goes into the check off node and it gets this update to the state. If I copy this, I can then go to this URL and authenticate. So I switch over here, I paste it in, I go here, I choose my email, I click allow, it's authorized. Let's go back to the application. Now I can click continue. The authorization passes, it gets the response from the tool, and it gets back a final response from the agent where it summarized the last email. The cool thing about this is now that it's authorized, I can use it seamlessly in future interactions. So let me create a new thread. From here, I can say like, what were my last two emails? I can configure it with the same user ID, Sam123. A, B, C, and then I can click Submit. We can see here that it ran all the way to completion without interrupting at all, because I'd already authorized this user, Sam123 ABC. If I have a different user, it'll prompt that for authorization. So if I go back and I say, what was my last email? and I add in a user ID that's different, Harrison123, and I press Submit, we can see that it checks off, it's not authorized, and so we'll interrupt. This URL you see here is coming from Arcade. Arcade is taking care of generating that URL and then storing any tokens that come back once you authenticate. I'm really excited about this Arcade integration because it lets you connect tools that need this type of end user authentication to your LangGraph agents. And I'm also really excited because it perfectly shows off why the human in the loop aspects of LangGraph are needed if you're looking to bring an agent into production. Thanks for watching.